Hello, this is Tolfin Trifold Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to introduce you all to an add-on called the Liquid Bubble add-on. Um, just as the name suggests, it just makes bubbles. Um, there are not a lot of uh, presets for it, but uh, for the presets that it does provide, it does you know give you some options to work with. That's not a free add-on, you have to pay for it, but um, it's not too bad for the price. Uh, the version I'm using is version 2, which is for Blender 4.0. Uh, the initial version, I don't know if it's still out there, or if he's still selling, the, selling it by the developer, but that works for Blender 3.0 only series, and version 2 works for 4.0 only. Um, I'll leave a link of it below this video so you can download yourselves and check it out, and the download process is still pretty much the same. Uh, go to Edit, Preferences, click on Install, uh, navigate where you've downloaded onto your system, click on Install, Add-on, and let me type in Bubble here, and you just put a check in the box and it's activated, and when you expand the toolbars on the right hand side, which is right here, uh, if you click on that, it gives you two options, only two presets for the bubbles, uh, you can click on any one and it and the parameters pretty much are just the same, the same steps also. So let's left, click, let's left click on the first one. And it gives us a big mass here. Now you have to understand that once you've um, activated the bubble add-on, it doesn't stick to the surface of your models. You just have to do that yourselves. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. Let's click on our cube and delete that. And let's click on our bubble mass again. And we'll look at it through a different uh, viewport shade. And as you can see how it works um, in all of its shading glory, so to speak. But let's just work on these parameters. Now, one thing I've seen with this add-on is that when it comes to the parameters, um, if the developer can help with this, there's not any description on what the parameters actually do. If you hover your mouse over uh, any of these parameters, there's no description, but it would help if there were description. No, it's kind of self-explanatory when you see the uh, parameters here, but some of these don't seem to do much, so to speak. But let's just go through all of it one at a time. This is bubble DSS2, which I don't know what that means, but if you expand it, increase the number, you see it doesn't really seem to do much in terms of affecting uh, the bulb. Maybe, maybe that's the shader. That could be it. But if we go to the second one, the displacement, it expands the bubbles and displaces them, which is pretty cool. The bubble size increase and decrease. That makes it bigger and smaller. That's not bad. Now, sub D, I think that represents or it means the subdivision levels of the bubbles and subdivision it actually adds to uh, your models to make them more pleasing to the eyes and it, it smooths out the uh, surface area of the bubbles uh, but once again when, when you increase the subdivisions it has two levels here you increase them what that will do is make your model look better but it'll take a longer time for the uh, model to render out now the scale minimum maximum makes the bubbles big and small but I don't know why there are two I mean these two do the same thing basically so I don't know why there are two of them uh, but that's there now the bubble blur that that actually I guess blurs refraction of light passing through the bubbles but then you have three options for maximum blur here which you can change also I guess to your liking and if we go further down there's a second uh, set of options here for the material um, you can expand it again and and uh, make it smaller and bigger which is looks pretty cool and as I said before when it comes to the seed and blender that means the variation in the the way your model looks so if you increase maybe with this mess with these parameters, it just gives you different variations of the way your model or your bubbles look and 
there are two or actually three of them here. So I guess the developer wants you to have as much control over the way your bubbles look just in general. This also does the same thing, detail the seed. So you can increase the decrease the detail and increase it, which is pretty cool. And then the roughness of the seed also. Now you can animate this if you wanted to. Um, and mostly in Blender when it comes to parameters, for the most part you can animate parameters. Uh, but if we expand our timeline here, let me scroll down to this last option here. If we have our mouse over the option here and we press I on our keyboard, it turns yellow, which means that there's a keyframe on our timeline. We go to 40 and we increase this uh, parameter here and then press I again we'll see it actually animates, which is cool. So that's the that's the interesting thing that it actually does. Now let's look at it from the viewport of the shader. And uh, we can look at it from the material viewport. Just get an idea of what it looks like when it comes to environments being around it. And it, it has kind of a glass shader. And it, I've seen that it renders also in cycles and in, and in EV, but in the cycles, obviously cycles works better and looks better we have that option there so yeah the liquid bubble add-on it's uh, it's different you know it's uh, it could do more that's what I'm that's what I'm that's, that's what's coming to my mind it could do it could have a lot more potential to that as I said earlier there could be more to it but um, you know this is the first a good attempt at you know an add-on that creates bubbles and uh, that's today's blender quick tip so try it out for yourselves Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios. I just remembered that I was going to show everyone how to apply this bubble to a surface of any model that you have in Blender. All you have to do is have your bubble selected, and then go to your modifier stacker, which is the wrench here on the far right-hand side of your UI of Blender, and then click on this arrow, and then click Apply, and that turns this into a mesh. I can tell that it's a mesh by pressing tab on your keyboard. You can see that it's uh, vertices. Uh, let's go back into the front view by pressing 1. And then press Z on your keyboard and go to wireframe mode. And you just uh, have this selected. This is the proportional editing part of uh, your tools here. Make sure you click on that to turn it to blue to make sure it's activated. And then left click and drag. And then you can just manipulate it. You can expand, make the uh, circle of influence, so to speak, of your proportional editing by scrolling up on your mouse wheel. When you scroll down, it, it uh, expands it. Scroll up, it uh, reduces it. You just have to just kind of, you know, just kind of manipulate the bubble to kind of fit around your model. And that's how you can actually uh, have the bubble actually stick to the surface of your model in Blender. So I just want to just uh, bring that out. All right, see you guys on the next one. Right, adios.